Remnant 2, a Souls-like shooter that expands on the combat options and systems from Remnant from the Ashes. We're given guns, classes, mods, bombs, and mutators, and wow, that's a lot of stuff. What if I just wanted to be Wizard? So I made it my goal to beat an entire apocalypse campaign with nothing but the Firestorm mod. The rules are simple. I'm only allowed to deal damage to enemies with Firestorm, meaning guns, melee, throne consumables, and class skills are completely off limits. The only things I'm allowed to do is use consumables for healing, use relics, and cast Firestorm. So can we beat Remnant 2 with only Firestorm? Let's find out. Before we actually get started, we need to talk about build. See. Normally, if you just cast mods, you'd be left without the ability to cast again, as normally you can only get the mod energy back when you shoot enemies. This build primarily revolves around the Archon class, Prime Perk Tempest. However, all the Archon skills complement our build a lot, giving us easier and faster to cast Firestorms, as well as more damage. The class alone isn't quite enough though, as the regen from just Archon is not that great. So I added the Stone of Malevolence ring, which turns our mod regeneration from this to this. However, before we go marching into the field, there's one last issue. Firestorm draws in nearby enemies and us, and the damage itself inflicts is pretty extraordinary. I added the Firestorm for better resistance, but the key to not self-destructing on every cast is actually Kinship, which is unlocked from maxing the Handler class. It reduces friendly damage dealt and received by up to 80%, and happens to apply to self-inflicted damage too. Here is the final build equipment and traits in case you want to see, but everything else is focused on damage output and survivability. Oh, and since Firestorm has to be attached to a weapon, it means we get a mutator too, for which I picked Failsafe for a 15% chance to immediately get Firestorm back after casting. If I don't state otherwise for any particular section, you can assume that this is the build I was using. Finally, we're equipped and ready to roll a campaign on Apocalypse. I wound up in Darude first in the Shahala timeline variant. Narud was a bit unfortunate since it had flying enemies, but it served as a good intro to the run. Right out of the gate, the build was working great. The first few enemies melted quickly and the mod recharged off of itself. I mostly ignored the enemies in the main area and ran to the first side dungeon, which turned out to be the Void Vessel facility. Inside of the facility, Firestorm absolutely melted everything. These tight spaces and hordes of enemies are exactly the kind of scenario that Firestorm shines. Of course, if I cast it in front of myself, Firestorm kind of blocked progression. I slowly made it to the pod we're supposed to climb in and hit an interesting scenario. As it turns out, the enemy that spawns from this pod seemingly can't be damaged by Firestorm. It didn't impede progress though as I just ran past it after respawning, but I did find it pretty odd. Jumping into the pod takes us to a fight with the fetid corpse, and while I could have totally skipped this fight, I wanted to tackle as many side areas and bosses as possible. The adds in this fight get absolutely obliterated by Firestorm, and since the main aberrant keeps burning, our mod basically refills instantly as long as Firestorm hits its mark. I opted for backing away from the boss and recasting, and honestly besides getting walled, there's not much else to this fight. After that, it's back into the overworld, and I probably won't talk much more about the overworld at this point since it's generally just summarized as set everything on fire and don't miss your shots. The first required boss in my run was the Abomination. Firestorm definitely doesn't melt its health as much as the standard enemies, but it still deals really good damage over time. And since we can set up a bunch of Firestorms all dealing damage, the mod regenerates ultra fast. The only two things to note is that if you cast enough Firestorms, their vortexes actually have such a strong pull on this boss that he can't move. And also because I had so many Firestorms up, his health melted before he even really got to attack me. The next area I ran into was the Astro Paths Respite, and I rolled the optional Gravity Drive event. I noticed the big eye elite wasn't taking much damage, so I dropped down and interestingly enough he just doesn't seem to follow, so maybe some random person will find that useful. At the bottom there's an encounter with the Restless Spirit, and this arena really sucks for Firestorm. Since it's quite small and I had the AoE upgrade for Firestorm, there weren't really many places I could go for safety if I kept casting. The other part that sucks is that he had the Vortex modifier, so not only was Firestorm pulling me in, but also him. Ultimately, this one just came down to trying to see what he's attacking through the mess of on-screen effects, but otherwise wasn't particularly difficult. 
I wanted to point out the Robot Elite's and Astro Pass for Spite as well, and a clarification on how Firestorm works. If you cast the mod and hit an enemy, it would latch onto them and follow them wherever they go. These elites take a while to die, so if they're carrying a firestorm and back you into a corner, it's pretty much a wipe since it pulls you into it, making escape not really possible. However, if you don't hit an enemy directly with firestorm and cast it on the ground, it won't follow them, and I found that that helped a lot versus these elites in particular. The next boss up is the Astropath, and of course I rolled the Elemental Resist modifier. I will say that the Firestorm graphics make it extraordinarily difficult to see when he's sending projectiles. Luckily they don't one-shot you though, and don't you tell me to wear heavy armor. I'm doing this run with this strip because it looks good and there's no compromise. Sound cues really helped a lot during this fight, and the beam and pulse attacks are easily dodged if you hear the sounds. Firestorm also hits him during this phase, so it deals consistent damage and stays reloaded. When he darkens the room, casually igniting the entire arena is a great strat since it can hit each purple astropath. There's not a lot else to say about this phase since they didn't really get to attack much due to how fast it took the rest of his health down. I didn't really find much else interesting in Narud as I rolled the Dark Conduit, which, yeah, Firestorm absolutely obliterates here. But as far as bosses or difficulty is concerned, I blew through the rest of the world. At least until Shahala. I hadn't done the alt fight, so I stuck the override pin and began. And yep, Firestorm doesn't hit him, which also means it doesn't regen the mod. Interestingly enough, his health bar did go down, which confused me a lot since Firestorm didn't seem to be causing it. After some research, the consensus seems to be that if you use the override pin, his health slowly drains, which is nice, I guess. But his moveset is pretty difficult in the alt fight, and I didn't have a way of dealing damage. That's when I discovered that hitting the hands with Firestorm does deal a tiny bit of damage back to Shahala. I ran the same gear I'd been running, but switched up my relic to the Saiyan Heart, which helped a bunch compared to Void, which I was running. Trying to cast and dodge everything proved to be too difficult, so I needed to develop some strats. This version of Shahala always does lasers first, so casting to the side will guarantee damage and mod regen at the start. In terms of positioning, I tried to always reposition to the edge of the door on the left side after every attack, which will make some sense in a minute. I won't go over how to dodge everything as there are a bunch of guides for that, but what does matter for each attack is when to cast and where to cast. Anytime he is quote unquote laning, you can generally put a firestorm on the ground to the left. He has two versions of his lane attack and during each, this is one of the biggest damage opportunities he gives since the hands are out longer and it's possible to set up multiple firestorms. Basically, you never want to clutter the center or the opposite side of the stage in case you need to run. If you get Vortex in your own Firestorm, it's probably a tempt over. Final note about the first phase is that if he summons pink projectiles, just keep your Firestorm, as it's not really possible to deal damage here. After phase 1, Chihala switches up his attacks, and the most problematic one is when he sweeps the stage with his beam. This is mostly why I hung near the door, as it will actually fail to pull you if you are standing here. The second phase, he no longer drains health, and Firestorm barely deals damage, so this attack is the best damage opportunity. If you hit a hand with Firestorm, it'll stay focused on them and continually deal damage while recharging your next cast. Stack them up as you walk across the stage and buy time to get more damage in until you have to cross the beam. Most other attacks in this phase are punishable too, but of note is his Orb Vortex attack. Do not cast here, as he already pulls you in. And while I didn't test it, I'm quite certain Firestorm would probably kill you here. Once down to his very last bit of health, he swaps attack patterns again and starts alternating between a set of overhead laser sweeps and a quick tail slam. It is possible to get damage in on any of the hands that are disconnected, but interestingly enough, during his laser sweep, it's actually possible to hit him directly with Firestorm. It doesn't seem to deal elemental damage, but it will pop up numbers and regenerate your mod. However, it does very little damage, and this was an absolutely grueling boss. It took me a full 20 minute fight to finally take him down. If you want to watch the raw fight, I'm quite proud of this one, and you can see it in the playlist linked below, as well as all the other raw boss fights. With Nuru down, I got sucked into the labyrinth and ran into an interesting issue at the very beginning. As it turns out, the white lock doesn't break from Firestorm. I tried changing gear and setups, and even the energized neck coil didn't seem to work. I wound up settling on using the Tormented Heart Relic to crack it open, but I wasn't and still am not happy about it. 
I found another larger lock later, and this one actually does break with Firestorm. But even after testing Energized Neck Claw by dragging an enemy near another lock, I wasn't able to make Firestorm open any of these other ones. That said, the first lock was the only required one, and the only use of the Tormented Heart I had to do. I decided to do the optional Bastion fight for funsies, and despite it being Hexer and Hardy, there's some nice cheese I found. Basically, if you set two Firestorms down beside each other, they can drag him down into the hole below. Even better, as the Hexes can't hit us up here, so needless to say, his demise was quick. The next Labyrinth event is a rush of standard and elite enemies. You'd think this would be as simple as clearing the overworld, but I actually had issues getting my mod to recharge on certain parts of this fight. After an attempt or two, I decided to swap to Ruined Heart, which basically gives you mod regen instead of health. Once I equipped the Rune Heart, I was able to take the fight down without any special strats or setups. Oh, one other interesting detail. The start of this fight starts with one of those white cubes we couldn't break, but this one just happens to break from it. I really don't understand these cubes, man. This labyrinth is an enigma. With a strange key in hand, I got to the last boss of the labyrinth, the infamous Labyrinth Sentinel. Interestingly enough, before I started this run, Firestorm didn't do any damage to this boss, but as of the time I'm recording, it seems something changed, and Firestorm now works without any specific setup. During the run, I ran Energized Net Coil, as that was the only way to bust these cubes before the DLC launched. Regardless, this boss was pretty straightforward, and if you've done this fight before, everything is on a very specific pattern. Learn the pattern, hit the blocks with Firestorm, and this one should go down fairly quickly. With the Labyrinth complete, I unlocked access to the next worlds and decided to tackle Losom next. As with Nerud, I won't talk much about the overworld, but I will say that being able to cast Firestorm near doorways and drag enemies back through makes the main enemies pretty easy to deal with. For the first side area, I got the Council, but I hadn't actually gotten the reward for turning in the dagger, so it didn't result in any fight or difficulty with clearing the main areas. Up next was the Brockwith Quarter, in which I got the Huntress. This boss is certainly possible to fight fairly, but on Apocalypse, why not cheese it if we can? If you die until the Huntress is asleep, you can wake it up with a nice cozy firestorm. Keep casting them before she stands up and the multiple vortexes will actually be so strong that the boss basically can't move, even when charging. You can quite literally cheese the entire fight in a minute like this, only needing to dodge the long range attacks she casts. Not a boss, but I thought I'd mention Tiller's Rest since I struggled a bit on this one. Any sewers tile set is kind of a pain since the enemies in water will not get the burning status effect, which affects Firestorm's damage output and ability to regenerate quickly. You have to open these gates, which raise really slowly while standard enemies and elites rush at you. Casting Firestorm in various places will actually get you trapped near them, so it's important to be careful with the placement of Firestorm. The last gate in particular really sucks as elites rush from both sides, and it's quite easy to get trapped if you cast Firestorm in front. My strat was to load up one side with Firestorms and then follow an escape route, kiting enemies in a particular direction and stacking generous amounts of fire in their path. The next boss of my playthrough was the Bloat King, which might not seem like a particularly difficult encounter at first. However, if you mess up and hit the actual main body before the orbs leave it, your mod regen is effectively gone. There is an option in a scenario like this, which is using a relic. Archon will give some mod power back when you use one, though it's not enough to refill it on its own. Instead, the strat is just to make sure to land shots on the floating orbs, which is a bit easier said than done. Other than getting good and not missing the mod cast though, there's not much else to toppling this fight. With the Bloat King down, I was able to pick up the mask and continue on to the final boss, Feyren the False King. Immediately after the first cast, I knew this was going to be a long fight. Firestorm was dealing damage, but it wasn't melting through it like the other bosses. Seems like a trend with the world bosses. There is one very important piece of info here, and that is to cast Firestorm at the ground and not at Feyren. Since Feyren is a close range attacker at times, if Firestorm is following him, it'll pull you towards him, and with light armor, that's basically a formula for defeat. Since we don't have free bullets, it's important to cast Firestorm in between the groups of orbs that shoot at you. It does a great job of taking them down and does it near instantly, but by casting it between them, you take them all down much faster than hitting individual sets. One interesting note about this boss is that he actually does get pulled into the Firestorm Vortex if you have multiple active near him. However, it only prevents him from a slow movement. Whenever he rushes towards you, the Firestorm pull doesn't seem to be able to stop him. I was getting pretty good runs of this boss, and then this happened. What? 
You know, these things just happen to me sometimes. I'm not exactly sure what caused his AI to just break, but I suspect it has something to do with the Firestorm Vortex pulling him out of a specific attack. Needless to say that once he stopped attacking, I didn't have any trouble melting his health to zero. The third world in my run was Yesha, specifically the Corruptor variant. The first area I rolled contained the Root Nexus, and to be honest I'm not entirely sure it's a boss, but we'll count it. Firestorm takes a long time to melt its health down, during which it mostly spawns a lot of elites and standard enemies. My main takeaway from this encounter was that placing the Firestorm on the ground beside the Nexus helped a lot with crowd control while still dealing damage to the main boss. After who knows how many casts it eventually did go down though. The next encounter I found was Kayula's Rest, and I was not prepared for this one. I'd kind of just been breezing through most of the standard bosses, but when I hit Kayula I noticed two things. First, it was elemental resist, because of course it was. The game seemed to love giving me that modifier through the entire run. Second was that my mod regen was really slow on Kayula, and my damage was terrible. After some investigation, it turns out that Kayula is actually weak to fire. However, since the arena is covered in water, it actually deals overall less than it would to a standard enemy, and elemental resist only worsened it more. The arena also prevented Kayula from catching on fire, which was both a large source of damage and regen for Firestorm. I spent a good chunk of time trying to figure out a strategy for this boss, even trying to route Kayula back through existing firestorms. I needed some type of change. I needed a new build. While my archetypes didn't change, I swapped up to Golden Ribbon, White Pawn Stamp, and Mod Shotted Ban. As for trades, I built a bit more bulky and went into Siphoner to help with staying alive. The final important change was with my Mutator. I couldn't rely on a 15% chance of refund, so I swapped to Feedback to get more mod regeneration off of Firestorm. Reloading Firestorm still wasn't free, but now it was sustainable and could regen fast enough to cast it before the previous one was close to running out. The short of my strategy was to stay near Firestorm, so when Kayla moved, she would conveniently end up in one of my Firestorms. As it turns out, if you circle a column, you can find a pattern of getting a tentacle casted on the other side while Kayola just stands in a firestorm. Once the tentacle is down, you can rush towards Kayola as she goes underground. If you happen to be on the edge of a firestorm, she will raise out of the ground inside of the AoE. For the first half of this fight, she will mostly repeat these two attacks if you follow this strategy, making sure to back away after she charges. The tentacle's interruption at halfway doesn't have much notable, especially since Firestorm can hit multiple ones of them at the same time. Once under half health, Kayola will start sending a shockwave through the water, but when this happens, she stands still. That means Firestorm is particularly effective during this, and even better, we can just duck behind a column to not get hit instead of actually needing to dodge it. With everything coming together, Kayola finally went down. Into the far woods and on to the next boss, and Yesha just kept surprising me. I'd expect the world focused on nature and root to burn pretty easily with Firestorm, and well, it was burning a bit too well. The little root tumblers are very abundant here, and if we cast a Firestorm on 1, 2, or even 3 for that matter, they don't burn long enough to regenerate Firestorm. Additionally, the flying enemies are basically impossible to hit, meaning the best course of action was to mostly rush through. Building up a few enemies behind you and then casting Firestorm to catch as many as possible helped a bunch with regen, but also by rushing through I could use my relics a bit more carelessly to get my mod regenerated if I didn't regenerate off a particular Firestorm. After a couple of areas, I ran into Shrewd. There's not a lot to say about this one except for two things. First, only cast Firestorm at Shrewd if he's on one of the ledges. If he's on the ground trying to hit you with a scythe, it's just gonna pull you into a scythe and kill you. The other thing has to do with the ad spawns, in which Firestorm can actually be cast preemptively near them. Besides those tips, this is pretty much a fair boss fight, even with Firestorm, and just comes down to learning how to dodge his attacks properly. The finale of Yesha culminates in a fight against the Corruptor, and I happen to get the Drain and Empathy modifier. Basically, the worse I played, the more health he'd sap, and if I had to use a relic to regen my mod, it would actually regenerate its health. And just like Shahala, casting directly at the Corruptor doesn't deal damage whatsoever. So great, how do we deal with this one? I thought Energizing Netcoal might be an option, but it didn't seem to do anything since Firestorm never applied burning to the Corruptor. However, during my attempts at this boss, I noticed that I hit a flying enemy near the Corruptor when it was reviving the Guardian, and it did some damage to the Corruptor. Knowing that, I threw on the Energizing Neck Coil to try and zap the Corruptor by killing the adds close to him. This meant that my focus was always on taking down the Guardian, so I could get a clear shot at the adds and try to deal damage. 
This always seemed viable, but the length of the fight was horrendous, and staying consistent for 20 or more minutes proved to be extremely difficult. During the massive amount of retries I had, I started getting desperate and shot a firestorm near the edge of the stage during one of the Corruptor's beams, hoping to hit one of the flying enemies. But as it turns out, it hit the Corruptor directly. This was a huge discovery. Since I was already used to dueling it out for nearly half an hour, the moment that I discovered this and found out it wasn't a one-time thing, I managed to immediately seal victory on the Corruptor during the same attempt, finally clearing all of Yesha. With all three worlds down, it's time to get into the final one, Root Earth. The overworld enemies are definitely tougher here, and I did struggle a bit with elites. The main takeaway I had from running through though is to try and find closed areas like side buildings to drag the enemies into, and then let them get trapped in the firestorm vortex on their way in. The first great ore area is an arena with lots of adds and elites, and the overworld strategy applies here too. The trains are a great spot to camp, but I did get walled a few times due to this, so I started hanging near a point where I could hop through the trains. This strategy even worked on the big elite at the end, though I did need to hop through the gaps a bit to prevent taking hits from him. The first actual boss of Root Earth is Cancer. Firestorm does great damage and also takes care of the sticks that he summons. However, I recommend not hitting him with Firestorm directly during this fight, as he can charge and the Vortex can pull you into his charge. Additionally, spreading Firestorms out a bit instead of overlapping them helps a bunch with keeping damage output up and preventing the sticks from being a pain. Overall, I have to say I think Firestorm actually made Cancer easier than he was in my regular playthrough. There's one more great ore and once again a bunch of standard enemies and elite spawn. Overall, there's only really one extra strat for Firestorm, which is when these elite spawn, I'd say go up on the stairs and walkway as they can be led through a trail of Firestorms. Otherwise, it's a bit too difficult to dodge them on ground while dodging your firestorms. And up next is one of the bosses that seems to be universally hated, Venom. Game, please, could I not roll elemental resist on the difficult bosses? I would really appreciate that. So, knowing that this fight was gonna suck, I figured I'd at least spend a bit of time trying to find a strat that made it easier than just play perfectly. Few things to note. You might think that casting Firestorm directly on him would be a bad idea since he's a fairly close range boss. However, I didn't seem to have any issues with getting sucked into the vortex, so I actually did cast it directly on him. It's very noticeable in some of his attacks that the vortexes are pulling him and slowing him down, and in certain animations it actually will pull him back away from you. This doesn't mean you're safe though as he still has range and certain attacks can break him out of the vortex. One other interesting interaction is that if he is caught behind geometry while getting pulled, you can actually get a bit of a break from his onslaught. This is very abusable in the attack where he goes up into the sky. If you're circling around the metal building in the center and catch him on a corner, you can completely trap him there until the attack is over. This means I was able to just step out from the corner to cast when my mod was reloaded, then duck back behind. This attack lasts a very long while and lets you get a substantial amount of damage in during this time. Beyond these tips though, this fight mostly came down to just learning his patterns well enough to actually dodge everything, though uh, trying to see which attack was incoming through the fire was difficult. With Venom down, that leaves one enemy left, the final boss, Annihilation. Oh man, this boss is a rush normally, but let me just say it is so much more difficult with only Firestorm. The DLC had dropped during my run, and this fight required a build change. With a few extra trait points, I went for a full tin into Siphoner due to needing to preserve relics. Additionally, I swapped my second class from Summoner to Medic. Also important to load out on this fight was the Shielded Heart, having the Shadeberry buff and buying a bunch of Fairy Needles in case you miss a cast. This fight already takes a lot of focus to beat normally, trying to focus on when to cast and preserving mod power to keep Firestorm reloaded while not missing in critical sections and getting my dodges just requires a ton of mental energy. So let's deep dive into all the unique issues that running Firestorm presents in this fight. There's an attack Annihilation does that spawns orbs, specifically when he drags his blade backwards in the ground. Generally, if he's covered in Firestorm, it will destroy these, but sometimes it doesn't, and if not, Firestorm needs to be reloaded in order to deal with it. If Firestorm bounces off the ground or isn't reloaded, these will most likely kill you. When Annihilation is hovering between attacks, he actually dodges Firestorm, meaning in order to beat him, I not only needed to focus on dodging his attacks, but casting in the middle of them. As for the rest of Phase 1, there isn't really much else that's helpful except just learning every single attack cue and sound effect to know exactly when something is coming. Phase 2 though gets so much worse. 
Firestorm actually persists between the phase change back to the original phase, but not the other way. Meaning if you use up a charge before swapping back to the second realm, Firestorm won't reload. Pop a fairy needle and heart while trying to survive and hope it reloads in time. Due to this, I really studied the moveset of Annihilation, and I'm sure other guides go over this, but there are specific points in his attacks that he can swap between phases. Anytime you're near one of these points, you should make sure that Firestorm is reloaded and not to cast until the phase changes. Also in the second phase, there is a second orb variation, and Firestorm needs to hit the ground at two very specific spots to destroy these in two casts. This is important as there's not enough time to reload it manually, and if you don't hit these spots, you won't get enough mod regen to take them out. This is where the shielded heart comes in. This is the one saving grace if you mess up any sequence or think you're about to get hit. I'm not sure how the calculation on the shield works, but it seems like even though certain attacks would one-shot me from full health, if I had just shielded, I would actually live them and the shield would still have a bit left. This boss took a lot of re-attempts to beat, but I did manage to get a good enough attempt to get through Phase 2 and best him. The minor Phase 3 section isn't an issue, but when I got here I casted Firestorm on Annihilation, and please, if you attempt this, don't do this. It doesn't grant mod regen, and I almost died to the ad since I couldn't deal damage, which would have been devastating. With Annihilation down, the game is defeated without ever firing a bullet, using melee or a class skill, and only by burning the root back to ash. I've uploaded the raw fights for all the interesting bosses into a playlist, and you can see them in the description if you want to see the unedited wins. Thanks to everyone who has watched this far. I hope you enjoyed the run, and if you did, perhaps leave a comment or like or subscribe as it has a huge impact on the channel and it would be greatly appreciated if you could do. I didn't run the DLC since I didn't feel like it would be that interesting a comparison, but if you'd like to see all the DLCs done when they fully released, let me know down below. For now, I'm gonna play with some new builds and work on the next run. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.